Hi, it's Miles O'Brien. I'm in my laundry room reporting for Boing Boing. That's astronaut Scott Pirozinski at Everest Base Camp. And we're just having a chat here. I'm in the laundry room. He's at Everest Base Camp, 17,000 feet and change. And if, as you can plainly see, the weather is good there after uh, quite a few days of not so good weather. And Scott, uh, I know you're reasonably right. optimistic that you and your team, uh, IMG, uh, will be on your way to the summit pretty soon. Lay out the plan from uh, Everest Base Camp now and what lies ahead. Big, big plans ahead, Miles. Uh, tomorrow morning, I will leave at the crack of dawn, actually before the crack of dawn, uh, to go through the Kumbu Ice Fall, which is uh, one of the more challenging parts of the route. And we'll go uh, all the way past Camp 1 to Camp 2. Uh, because we're fit now, we can actually do that. Camp 2 is at 21,500 feet. We'll spend uh, a couple of nights there. And then we will go up uh, the Lhotse face, which is very, very steep, very hard ice, to Camp 3 at 24,500 feet. And then the following day, we'll go to the South Call, which is a saddle between two of the biggest mountains in the world, the tallest, which is Mount Everest, and then Lhotse, which is the fourth highest mountain in the world. There's a saddle there at 26,000 feet. That's our high camp. And we'll spend probably uh, eight to ten hours there just resting during the daytime, uh, drinking lots of fluids, getting uh, uh, some ramen and whatever snacks we can get into our bodies. We won't be very hungry, but we'll, we'll try and force ourselves to eat anyway. And then around 8 or 9 o'clock at night, we'll take off for the summit. We'll climb all the way through the night to the uh, the top of the world, which is at 29,035 feet. Then what happens? <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll arrive uh, around sunrise uh, uh, on May 20th. Uh, which should, uh, for your time, uh, you know, it'll be sometime the evening of uh, May 19th on the East Coast. And uh, we'll spend perhaps 30 to 45 minutes there taking pictures and taking in the view. And then uh, the toughest part of the climb actually is getting down. So we'll be very, very careful and uh, try and get down, if we can, all the way down to Camp 2 that very same day. So it'll be an epic long, long day, probably climbing for almost 24 hours straight. Now, just quickly, why is the... the sounds like fun, right? It, it sounds sounds like it's uh, the adventure of a lifetime. And for you, saying, for you to say that is something. <laughs> so, uh, uh, climbing, why is climbing down harder? Well, it, it uh, takes a lot of focus and energy to, uh, to get to the top. And, of course, we're highly motivated to get to the top. Uh, we've been dreaming of this moment our entire lives. But... Uh, uh, by the time you get to the uh, the top, you're only halfway done, and you've used up a lot of your energy reserves. So, uh, also the other part that's difficult um, as you're climbing up a hill, if you were to fall, you would lean into the hill and and be able to brace yourself. But as you're coming down a hill, uh, if you trip and fall, you're going to fall down the hill, uh, and so uh, it's easy to catch a, a crampon tip or some, something along those lines. And so we just have to be very, very focused, um, clip into the fixed lines uh, very precisely, and uh, you know, watch our teammates as well. Uh, we'll be near exhaustion on the way down. All right. You don't want to be falling down the mountain. That's not good. Hey, it, things look good. The weather looks yeah. good. Things seem to be lining up. A few days ago, it didn't look so. Let me show you around. Yeah. Give us a quick uh, brief uh, tour around, and while you're walking around and giving us the brief tour, uh, things were not so optimistic just even a few days ago, were they? No, they were not. We had horrible weather. We had a, a team very high on the mountain uh, going on a summit bid, which unfortunately wasn't successful. And one of the climbers uh, was, was injured on the descent. He's fine now. In fact, he's uh, well enough that he hopes to, uh, to make another shot at the, uh, at the summit. A uh, very strong guy. It's just a, a very unforgiving place. Weather and avalanches. We we um, had one uh, climbing team in the Cumbu Ice Fall during a major major avalanche, and and uh, one of the Sherpas was actually killed. And so uh, that still really bothers all of us that uh, um, you know we we lost a, a fellow mountaineer. Well, uh, 
it's 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 a mix of emotions there. You're in this incredibly beautiful scene. I mean, I'm just watching behind you. Uh, how it, it's, it, and you know, it's got to be amazing being there and and taking this all in. Exactly right. No, I I feel uh, like I've been given a real uh, gift in life here to to be here and uh, to actually be here a second time. This is my second uh, attempt on Everest. I was here a year ago when I injured my back high on the mountain. So I, you know, I've been given another shot at this and, uh, um, you know, to be in the, in the presence of all this beauty and, and with a, a great team of people. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a great life experience. No doubt about it. All right, we wish you well. Be safe, and uh, those of you at home who want to follow Scott, uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. You can check out his blog at onorbit.com forward slash Everest, or actually follow his tracks at the Spot Adventures page, www.spotadventures.com. He's got a satellite tracking device. There it is, the Spot device, satellite messenger, which... Um, leaves an electronic trail of breadcrumbs, and uh, you'll be able to watch him as he makes his way right. to the summit. So be safe, and we'll be watching. Thanks. Bye, guys. This is Miles O'Brien in my laundry room for Boing Boing.